Okay, I got to ask you some total questions. How did that happen? It was literally out of the blue. Literally. Um, I was actually in Ibiza uh, doing a TV show for a guy called Frank Farian, who was the producer of Millie Vanilli and Boney M. And I met Frank because when Mike, and Mike Oldfield and I mixed Discovery, which was 1984, Mike was doing his tax year out of England, so he had to find a studio somewhere that had a console that he had, which was a Neve 8108. Um, we found a couple, and one of them was Frank Perrin's studio just outside of uh, Frankfurt in Bad Homburg. So that's how I met Frank. So he met me as an engineer, not a, a drummer. But obviously realized I was a, you know, who we were, and who Mike was, well, he knew who Mike was. Uh, and he obviously realized I, I was a drummer. And then he started booking me for sessions. So I'd fly over to Germany and, and play with him. Uh, one, it was called the Far Corporation. And Bobby Kimball was part of that uh, record as well. I think even Luke, part of Toto played on the, on the record too. So fast forward to 92, I'm doing this TV show and Bobby Kimball is also there. And we're staying in this beautiful place out in the, well, it's all country, I guess, you know, somewhere in Ibiza. One telephone in a booth right outside the reception. It was very country, you know. And I was walking down for breakfast, and um, Bobby, I saw Bobby, and he was on the phone, and he saw me and turned around and went, you know, like this, and said, you're not going to believe this, Jeff Bacara just died. I went, what? And he said, yeah, I'm, get, I'm finding out about it now. I said, oh, no. You know, so that, that was the first thing I heard. One week later, I was in my house in Suffolk in England. Um, ooh, my battery's going. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to move inside. Okay. And then um, um, I got a call at about midnight, my time, in, um, in, um, in England from Lukather, who was in a meeting obviously they're eight hours behind they were in a meeting at Fitzgerald Hartley which was their management company up in Ventura um, and he said oh, there we go. Um, he said um, I said hey Luke and I, I knew him but not, not very well but I knew him and I said hey Luke I said and I just thought he was calling me to maybe tell me about Jeff or maybe talk about him or just, you know, one of, one of just a friendly call. He said, look, I'll come straight to the point. Will you come and play with us? I went, huh? <laughs> really? He said, yeah, we've got a, we've got a 42 day tour booked, uh, world tour promoting our new album. We've got 40 people on the payroll. Um, we here trying to make a decision about whether we should do this tour. Um, if you'll join us, we'll do the tour. And I went, wow, how soon is this going to happen? He said, as soon as you can make it, we've got we to gotta rehearse. We've never rehearsed with anybody else before in the drum chair. Yeah. And I went, okay, so, well, look, um, uh, I need some time to think about this. He said, well, don't take too long, please. And I went, okay. So I put down the phone. I was like, Toto, me? Wow, <laughs> that's... <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I think I'd asked him, "Well, you, you send the album. Let, let me hear the, the new album and stuff." So they they shipped that over. Um, in those days, of course, you know we didn't have internet like we do now. Um, I'm not sure if we even had it. We had computers, but um, so they put it in FedEx. I think overnight, which just means four days to get to England. Um, and uh, I started to look at. I was just about to start a record the very next day in London with a band called The Big Country, or Big Country. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo Skinners was the name of the record. And um, I had a load of stuff booked, and I started ringing people. I just said, look, um, I know that I'm booked to do your record on September, what's it, whatever it is, but I've just been asked by Toto to play with them for their world tour. Um, I'm going to have to cancel. Is, is, is that okay? And everybody's reaction was incredibly favorable. There was one person who was a little put out. Um, 
I think it was to do with Amsterdam. So it might have been a Dutch thing I was doing. But um, basically, everybody said, totally understand. I'm a huge fan of Toto. Uh, so sad about Jeff. Yeah. Absolutely. No problem. So by the time a few days went by and I called Luke back, um, I was, you know, kind of clear my diary, as it was. One of those people was, was Jack Bruce, too. Wow. You know, because I was had just started playing with Jack again. We were doing some live concerts. Uh, he'd recorded in my studio. Uh, I had a studio at my house, and he lived fairly locally. And so that's how that, that happened. I what? heard the new album. I, I understood why they would ask me, because it was a lot more rocky, yeah. the album, uh, Kingdom of Desire. It was much more. It was a four-piece band then with, you know, backing singers and percussionists. Um, and I went, oh, okay, I see, you know. And then uh, that was it. And I actually left England that day that I flew to Los Angeles, which I've been planning for about a year anyway. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. <laughs>